now joined by James Hinchcliffe driving the number five Aero Electronics SPM Honda for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports. James, I understand that this is a very difficult situation. It's not how you hoped or expected things to turn out today. Um, but take us through that last run and, and what you were feeling from the car when you felt that vibration. Uh, I just want to first start off by saying, you know, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't been on the internet. I haven't heard anything, you know, myself, but I've, you know, I've heard some stuff from other people. Uh, this is in no way Pippa Man's fault um, or anybody else in line's fault. This is our fault. So if there's anybody out there that's got anything bad to say about that, you don't know motorsports and keep your mouth shut. As far as our run, yeah, I, uh, I pulled out of the pits. You know, the, the track had been getting a little bit quicker, um, so we were pretty optimistic, to be honest. And uh, as soon as I left pit lane, I felt a, a horrible vibration, called it in, then weirdly it kind of started to go away, and I thought maybe I just had some pickup on my tires or something. Um, so you know, I called into the team. I said, no, I think it's all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. And then as I turned into turn three, it all came back again, um, and it was, I mean, it, was, it was violent. And so came in, and, you know, we've since uh, – since diagnosed a, uh, a tire pressure sensor failure, it kind of broke off the rim and was rattling around inside the tire, which you know at 200 plus miles an hour doesn't doesn't feel good. So it, it, we had to come in. If we had stayed out, there's a good chance it could have caused a tire failure, and then you'd not be in the show and have a broken race car. So we did what we had to do to come in, and unfortunately, the way it all uh, worked out timing-wise, there was uh, just not not enough seconds left in the day to get our last run in because for sure the aero car had the speed. Um, to be in the show, I mean, you know, not not the fastest car by any stretch this month, but we weren't expecting that. Um, but you know, certainly enough to be comfortable in the show, and just got it for all the guys on the team. Everybody works so hard. This race means so much to every single one of us that work in this paddock. You know, it's it's not unique to our team by any stretch, and uh, it's you know, it's obviously a pretty uh, pretty bummed attitude back in the uh, in the garage in the moment. But we're a strong group. You know, this track, believe it or not, has done worse to me in the past, and we came back swinging, so we'll be fine. Questions for James. Yes, Bob. James, Bob Kravitz with WTHR. First of all, thank you for coming up here and addressing us. Um, in 2011, Ryan Hunter Ray failed to qualify, and as you know, uh, they purchased the car from A.J. Foyt. Is that something that you would be willing to do if your team ownership was willing to go that route? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm here to race at the end of the day, and uh, I work for Sam and Rick, and whatever Sam and Rick tell me to do, I'll do. So. I, I believe that there are some uh, options being investigated, but at this point, I don't know any more than you do. Yes. Toward the end, it looked to me like, and part of the, the crowd reaction here was flipping the bird at, at, at a couple of drivers ahead of you. And go through for us, if you would, the, the last bit where you were in line and then just sitting there were you expecting the gun to go off at six instead of 550 um what exactly happened there yeah i mean personally i thought it was six you know i guess a few years ago it changed to 550 for uh for tv i got their drama <laughs> so that worked um but yeah i mean it's you know pip and i were both running to get back into uh into lane one there and yeah, I mean, man, you can you can play Monday morning quarterback all you want and, and try and look at things that could have been done differently, decisions that could have been made by certain people to maybe help the cause. They weren't. So uh, at the end of the day, it's our bed. we got to lie in it. And it's really, you know, a function of kind of getting through tonight and, uh, and then, you know, moving on to the next one. Marshall? Hinch, bit of a hypothetical here. You obviously didn't get to get up to speed when you had the vibration issue. What was the general sense within the team, though, about whatever setup advancements you made? Do you think you had that speed to get in if you were able to make a complete run? Yeah, I mean, you know, tragically, the first run we did, we, we did find a problem with the car. We know exactly what, what took the speed away that we had yesterday. Um, so, you know, that that being rectified, we kind of expect, and, and, you know, the margin not being super big from our previous run to, to get in the show, um, you know, we were sort of expecting a bit of a jump in pace. I think Jack did a pretty decent jump in pace on his second run. Uh, and he, he had a similar problem uh, to myself. So, um, yeah, pretty confident. It was one of those weird situations where, you know, for it being <laughs> after 5 o'clock on bump day and being out of the show, we were still actually relatively okay with it because uh, we, had, we had confidence in the package that we had at that time. Bruce. 
I don't know how to explain this properly, but uh, the way we had guys going out to get in the fast nine, guys going out to get bumped back into the field or to keep from getting bumped. In a way, you got guys going from the top of the field, top of the bottom. Would you like to maybe see that split where one ends at 530 and then the last 30 minutes is set aside for the bumpers? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> now I do. It's great. But, you know, in, until that scenario comes up, you know, nobody nobody really thinks of it quite going down like that, right? So um, I'm sure Andy Carr will look at it, whether that leads to a change or not. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's it, it, the rules are black and white. We knew, we knew the procedure going into it. We knew what we were getting ourselves into. Um, so it just it's just the chips in the far away, man. It's uh, there's not there's not a whole it's, it's not a whole lot more complicated than that, unfortunately. But yeah, if, if they look into changing it in the future, cool. We'll go by those rules and, and try and work that system to our advantage. Plus, there's a lot of reason why Alexander was going out trying to get the fast line. Meanwhile, you're trying to get back in the field. Look, I I'm not going to criticize anybody for going out and trying to comp, you know improve their qualifying time. Um, you know, there are some guys that are trying to bump in the fast nine. There are some guys that, you know, maybe weren't really quite close enough to being in trouble that still went out, even though they had no chance to get in the fast nine. Uh, but that's that's their that's their right. You know, they have every right to do that. Um, it's if there's any decisions to be made in terms of, you know, making, you know, letting those guys go out or not, it's way above my pay grade. And it's uh, <laughs> it's not something I'll ever begrudge anybody. It's nobody screwed us. You know, the system didn't fail us. We failed us. And we just have to do better. And, and I know this team is capable of better. We are better than this. I know that. Everybody in the garage knows that. We deserve to be in this race, but just not this year. Any final questions for James? Yes, Aaron. It's admirable to hear how you're taking this, and thank you for joining us. Um, when it comes down to seconds like it did, how frustrating is the impact of the weather we saw today? Yeah, you know, there are, again, man, there are so many things that stacked up against us today, and uh, and that's the nature of the beast. That's, you know, that's that's Indy. That's qualifying here. Um, at the end of the day, everybody got a run, which is the rule, and our run wasn't good enough. So you can say you can blame the weather, you can blame other cars in line, you can blame whatever you want, but it just, it just didn't happen today. Yes, Bob. You talked about this place being a cruel mistress. Um, you've had quite some experience here. Just to change, change the subject a little bit, bump day, we haven't had it since 2011. You're obviously on the wrong side of it, but just generally speaking, what are, what are your feelings about bump day maybe taking yourself out of the equation today? No, I mean, I, everybody's been hoping for a bump day since 2012. You know, it's uh, it's part of the excitement of this race. It's part of the tradition of this race. 33 cars start it. That's the deal. It always has been, bar a few extenuous circumstances examples. Um, so I'm, I'm all for it. You know, it's, it sucks to be sitting up here and saying that at this point. But, you know, the, the purist in me and the, you know, the motorsport enthusiast in me thinks this is good for the sport. And that's more important than what's good for James Hinchcliffe today. So. James, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thanks, guys.